Tal Heinrich, spokeswoman for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, joins us now. Tal, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Let me get you to respond to something that Yoav Gallant said just a moment ago. He said that there will be a different security regime in Gaza. What does that mean? So as we stated, the goal of the operation in Gaza right now, of this war that we didn't start, we didn't even expect, we were dragged into it by Hamas when they carried out the October 7th massacre and butchered mm -hmm. 1,400 Israelis. We said that the goal is to dismantle Hamas's military capabilities and to make sure that by the end of this, they will also lack the motivation to ever hurt us as they did. We will also take out their uh, governance uh, bodies and we will make sure that Hamas will be no longer in the Gaza Strip. We will change the reality there. Now, there are different, different contingency plans that are being discussed uh, in Israeli circles and with international and American counterparts right now about the day after. But we're not there yet. Uh, right now, we are very determined to uh, accomplish this goal. We are a nation in deep, deep pain, as President Biden said yesterday. He was here and he witnessed the pain because he mm -hmm. met with some of these families who lost loved ones. But nevertheless, we are very determined um, and, and our, uh, our cause is, is, is very clear and is very just. Uh, in, in terms of this different security arrangement, and I know that that's for the day after, but I assume that that's what this quadrilateral summit in Amman, Jordan, between President Biden, King Abdullah, al-Sisi of Egypt, and Mahmoud Abbas was supposed to be about? Well, uh, obviously, uh, our American counterparts are discussing uh, with uh, different players in, in the region. Now, we, we are not part of, of some of these discussions. We are holding different uh, discussions with regional partners as, as well behind the scenes. Uh, but once we will complete the mission of dismantling Hamas, I can tell you, John, that also other actors across the region will understand that a strong Israel, an Israel that took out this terrorist, monstrous regime, also serves their interests. And you know what? It is not coincidental that this massacre took place right before when Israel was on the brink of a diplomatic breakthrough with Saudi Arabia. Peace and calm in the region mm. is the enemy of these terrorists. That's the worst nightmare, yeah. in fact. Uh, the, the idea of what comes next is something I'll be discussing with General David Petraeus uh, later on today mm -hmm. here on Fox. Let me ask you about the ground operation, because we had the prime minister yesterday out of the front lines with the troops. Yoav Gallant, the defense minister, was also out there. Uh, Gallant said, if you haven't seen the inside of Gaza yet, you soon will. I take it that a ground operation is imminent. Well, I cannot divulge any information moving ahead about military and, and operational strategy. But what I can tell you is that when the prime minister went down south to meet with some of these uh, brigades, uh, he saw and he described that, that he saw the fire in their eyes. Some of these soldiers that you saw, they lost friends over the past, uh, uh, you know, uh, 14 days. But they are so determined and they have a very strong, resilient nation behind them. You know why? Because, John, Israel is a small nation, and everyone in this country either knows someone who serves on the front lines, someone who is taking part in the national effort as part of the reserve force. We mobilized many uh, forces. Or someone who was abducted. We have 203 Israelis still being held captive mm -hmm. in Gaza. Someone who was killed or uh, someone who was injured. We're all in this together, and we will win. Uh, on the subject, Tal, of the hostages, Russia is reportedly in contact with Hamas to, in an attempt to free those hostages. The Russian ambassador to Israel saying in a statement that was published by a Russian newspaper, quote, of course we have contacts with representatives of Hamas. And first of all, they are aimed at rescuing the hostages from the places where they are now, captured by Hamas militants on the first day of the, frankly speaking, terrorist attack on Israeli civilians. Um, Israel has a nominal relationship with Russia. Do you want, do you need their help on this issue? Well, I cannot comment about anything that's been said or reported allegedly bet uh, happening between uh, Russia and Hamas. What I do know is that Prime Minister Netanyahu has spoken to uh, President Putin of Russia a few days ago. Mm -hmm. um, regarding the hostages, all we say, and we keep repeating it every day, that is one of the top priorities of this operation. We are calling on Hamas to unconditionally release them, and we're hoping that many in the international community will join our demand and back it uh, when we say that we want the Red Cross to visit them. This is the number one humanitarian uh, pressing issue in Gaza right now, the state of the hostages. We will bring them back.
Uh, all right, we are looking uh, there at live pictures, uh, by the way, just a second ago uh, from up at the uh, border between Israel and Lebanon, uh, where uh, things continue to heat up. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. But first, let's listen to what President Biden said last night in his address to the nation. Tomorrow, I'm going to send to Congress an urgent budget request to fund America's national security needs to support our critical partners, including Israel and Ukraine, is a smart investment that's going to pay dividends for American security for generations. If we walk away and let Putin erase Ukraine's independence, would-be aggressors around the world be emboldened. So there was a speech that was not just about Israel, but about Ukraine as well. And, and, and Tal, just finish this out here. Did the president pay enough attention to the situation in Israel? Well, the president was here, and we were very grateful for his visit. The fact that he flew into a war zone, this is unprecedented, and it speaks volumes of the support that we are receiving from the American people and the, the bipartisan support also that we're seeing in the U.S. Congress. It is very important that the United States is, is leading this with its global moral leadership, because when you guys are setting the tone, others follow. And just like was the case with ISIS when we saw an international coalition being formed to defeat this monstrous organization, that is the case with Hamas, and it's happening right in front of our eyes. Uh, so we are very grateful for the support that we are receiving from the American people. All right, Tal Heinrich, we will stand by and we will watch along with you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, John. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.